Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Well, the radio is uh, now complete, and what I wanted to do was to do one final video just to act as a, uh, a, a bookend to this particular series. Um, at this stage, there's nothing I really want to change with the radio. Um, I've done some on-air tests, and um, they've been very good, actually. Um, one guy saying that the, uh, the output or the received signal was mint, so uh, I'll certainly take that um, as, as, as a vote of confidence, which is great. Um, just got at the moment the the, uh, the bands are dead, but uh, getting ground wave quite happily up to the top of New Zealand, which is good. Uh, so in terms of changes, um, haven't done very much at all. So uh, in terms of that uh, that amplifier that I worked on um, a couple of days ago, so no real changes there apart from just shifting what was the low pass filter sitting here. I've just moved that onto the board, um, and I've just added on the input of that totem pole. A 100 nanofarad capacitor, uh, just coupling in the uh, the transmit RF from the the SI5351. No other changes to that particular board. Uh, outputs now going, of course, through the uh, antenna switch over here, uh, and out the antenna. Uh, the only other change I made, you'll recall that um, I said at the beginning that I was going to generate side tone by keeping the receiver running during transmit but acknowledging that the high level of RF that was going to be leaking back into um, the receiver was going to be at a very high level and I needed to knock that back. Um, so I wasn't going to blow my ears out through the uh, through the speaker here. So what I did there, um, I've added just down here, uh, let me just sort of zoom in on that one, um, a little double pole, double throw relay down here. Uh, and what that's doing is this, so I hope that should be clear here. Um, yeah, that'd be fine. So the the audio is coming in through the NE5534. That's a, the first part of the audio frequency amplifier. And then into this double pole, double throw relay. In the normal position, i.e. on receive, the, the audio path is down through. That audio from that um, preamplifier is dropped across a 100k ohm uh, main volume control. That's this one here. And then the output of, or the wiper arm of that particular volume control then feeds through the uh, the second normally closed uh, contact of that relay and out through the LM380 to the speaker. On transmit, uh, both sides obviously move to the uh, normally open contacts. And now that R, so not RF actually, that audio frequency is now being dropped across a series 560k ohm resistor uh, and then a 10k trim pot. That's that little one down here. And then that allows me now just to trim to get a nice pleasant level of side tone that then gets fed back through and out the LM380 uh, to the speaker. Um, so that was the only change to that, which means that, for example, I'm on receive here at the moment. Um, and if I was to go to transmit, that frequency is definitely clear. Then I get a nice pleasant um, side tone level, irrespective of, of, of course, of what the, what the master volume is. So, uh, so that's working just fine, which is great. And that's the only other change. So there's been no other changes to the receiver um, from the last from the last series of videos where I was doing the uh, the IFMs and the like. So that's it. Um, I don't have too much else to say, really. Like I say, the on-air tests have been um, have been good and been no issues with uh, with readability and the like. Uh, the reverse beacon networks picking me up, which is great. So I think now it's just a matter of uh, Getting back into it, finishing off, hoping up uh, my um, my uh, receive um, CW skills, and then quietly getting back into transmitting for real and and making more and more contacts, and like I say, getting that proficiency back up, which was the whole aim of making this radio. And then eventually, what I do want to do is I'll probably go through. Well, it is my desire to uh, to break this radio down, so to speak, uh, and to mount it into um, into a box, probably. This size here, so it's not it's not the same size for tramping. It's that sort of next size up. So that that's going to be the intent there, um, and I probably won't have to do too much work uh, to allow that to fit. Um, it's not an overly large radio, just being CW. So anyway, um, I'll say 73s there. Yeah, uh, there. Um, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to to talk about. So uh, all happy days. So uh, 73s all. Um, stay safe with this whole COVID-19. And um, I'm sort of thinking about, just a, I guess as a final finish off here, 
for for my next build, I wouldn't mind doing a um, a short wave receiver um, for just listening to some of the, the short wave broadcast bands. Uh, so amplitude modulation, and I'm thinking about uh, making the VFO uh, footy analog. So no no display, um, no Arduino, no SI fifty three fifty one, but a, but a purely uh, analog VFO, say a Hartley, um, which allows me then to, to use some of those nice reduction geared, geared capacitors that I have uh, in the jock box. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking, so let me know if that's sort of of interest or not. Otherwise, I will definitely say, <coughs> gosh, excuse me, um, 73s, and um, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.